Hello guys, Ingemar here. Welcome to my first episode of the How To series. We're going to touch a few topics, Safari windows, the electrical panel with the associated power outlets, how to remove the rear bench and the drains on the floor of the body, plus the NATO socket. There have been a lot of issues with the Safari windows. I can hear that or read that in the different forums on the internet. People have leakages with those. It happened to me only once in the whole half year now. And I have talked to those people and identified probably the main reason is if the car is parked in an uphill position. Then this uh, leakage happens and it's probably because of the position of the drain on top of the Safari window. So try to avoid parking uphill in a heavy rain. We're all familiar with the high load auxiliary panel. We know the switches out there, but how are they connected? So external number two switch powers the right front corner, which is mainly designed for LED bars. External number three powers the remaining power sockets out here on the left hand side on in the rear right corner. External number four powers the optional winch in the front and the NATO socket in the back. And the remaining switch, external number five, powers the outlet under the bonnet. Last but not least, we have internal one and two located at the passenger and driver side in the footwell. They are located behind the panel and that's how it looks like. Removing the rear seats is quite easy and just takes a couple of moments, minutes. Uh, as usual, you just lift the seat cover and here you can see there's two screws here along the rail on the longer bench, it's three. You just take those out, remove the clips and the bench goes off. Super easy. So you take out those two screws, number one, and get a second one. Just take those clips out with a little effort and you can remove the bench. Not very time consuming, super fast and that will give me the additional space uh, I will need on my longer trips. And I still keep the flexibility of the five-seater when I'm not overlanding. To put them back in, you just reverse the whole process, just put them back in place and then you take the little uh, plastic brackets here, you slide them in, you hear a little click if you're in position. One second. There we go. That's it. Put the screw back in, you're done. There were quite a few questions regarding the drain plugs of the car as well. Um, I'll show you how to access those. Um, I opted for the carpets here, the additional carpets, so they are mounted with those pins. You just have to push them down, then you can remove those mats. There we go. There you have a little screw here, which is holding the rubber floor in place. Now you can take it out. All the way to the front and here is the drain plug. Quite easy to remove and well here's some still some remains of my uh, Dynatrol treatment which I talked about the last time. But that's how you drain your car. Put it back in, fix it and bring that back into place. That's it.
The Grenadier comes standard with the NATO socket here in the back. It has several purposes. One is the rear winch. If you opted for this one, you can connect it here at this plug. But it's also, as it calls, as it, well, as the name says, it's NATO standard. That means military vehicles use it to give each other jump starts. You can actually connect all kind of external equipment with it or power up other uh, cars, other vehicles. This was the first little episode of my how-to series. Another great source of information is the INEOS forum. You can find it online. The link will be below. Uh, there is very dedicated people in there. They share the information. They do a lot of research uh, on the car. So great source of information. Uh, I get a lot of ideas there as well. So check it out. Uh, I want to do more of those videos if you're interested in a specific topic if you want me to talk about something very specific very short uh, just let me know in the comments and we'll try to do that